Imagine this. You wake up one morning and you feel a little bit sick. So you go to the doctor and he tells you that you have this disease and you need to take this specific medication for the treatment. You should take one pill every eight hours for two weeks. So the question is, why exactly you should take the same medication every time? To answer this question, first you need to take a look at what exactly happens after you take your medication. First you need to know that we have different routes of administration, which means there are different ways for the drug to enter your body and get into your bloodstream. So the circulatory system would help the drugs distribute in your body until they reach their target. So if you inject the drug, the concentration of the drug in your blood or plasma would increase rapidly. But after that, your body tries to eliminate it right away by metabolizing it with the help of your liver, and its waste products would excrete it with the help of the kidneys. Now if you take the drug orally, it needs a little bit more time to go to your stomach and absorb into your bloodstream. In either of those ways, the drug should be in a specific range of concentration in your blood to be effective, which we call the therapeutic window. So if the drug concentration goes below this, it isn't effective anymore. Therefore, here you should take another dose. And if you don't take your medication in time, the drug concentration in your system would be lower than it should be, and you're not going to get better. But if you take your medication sooner, or even eat a lot of them, the drug concentration in your body would increase to the toxic level. Every substance should be considered a poison when overconsumed in a short period of time, even the water. However, one of the most toxic substances like cyanide can't hurt you if it consumed less than the toxic dose. Now if you look at this chart, this is not quite the best method for the treatment of diseases because the time that the drug spends in here matters, right? But every drug has a different therapeutic window and different half-life. For example, just imagine a drug with a narrower therapeutic window and a lower half-life but it would be ideal if the concentration of the drug stay longer in the therapeutic window. So what you want to do is to make a system that could release the drug in a longer periods of time. Or in an ideal world, you may want to design a system to release the drug at a constant rate. This is where biomaterials can help to solve the problems. The most popular approach is that you can make a reservoir system, which means that we can prolong the drug release by biomaterial coating. It is called encapsulation and they're the same capsules that we've been using for decades. This is one of the type that called soft gel capsules. The coated material is gelatin that encapsulated the main drug. We have another type of capsule, which are hard capsules, and they're manufactured as two-piece unit that are filled with the formulated drug. They're commonly used for the immediate release profile, but if you change the coating by material to a polymer such as silicone rubber or PDMS, which doesn't easily dissolve, the drug should diffuse through the polymer and it takes a lot of time for the drug to come out. In another way, we can make a matrix system in which we can disperse the drug with the polymer. Now, if our polymer is erodible, the drug would release when the polymer dissolves. But if the polymer is non-erodible, the drug can diffuse from channels or through a matrix mesh. In some cases, we can attach the drug with a polymer backbone and the drug can be released with the help of a specific enzymes. Nowadays, with the emergence of nanotechnology, we can make this drug system even smaller and smarter. For example, we can make micrometers or nanometers reservoir matrix systems, and we can bind antibodies to the surface of nanomaterials in which they can specifically bind and release the drug to their target. In addition, we can make systems that can sense a specific environmental factors to release the drug. For example, some biomaterials respond to pH, light, or temperature, which we need to talk about them specifically in other videos. But until then, that's it from me, and thank you for watching.